success serve okay I created a success serve let and I'll simply copy my code for success serve let in here save there another here Okay, so I've created and double scene, right? So let's just retain that uh, double scene here so that I don't have any errors. And even here, I need to give a double C then, right? Okay, right? Okay, so I'll name this now. Okay, even in this uh, validate server, I don't need this right now because I'm not using it. Okay. Okay. So what we have in success serve, we simply uh, display this text. Congratulations, you have been entered. You have entered the correct username and password on the screen when the uh, control goes to the success server. This is what um, will be displayed on the screen, right? So that's the end of it, uh, end of your application. This is the end point when you hit a uh, success. Okay, and what we have in failure? I'll create a new failure servlet. I'll say failure serve. Code for my failure servlet. And remove the unused imports and from here. Right. Okay. So similar to the success servlet, we just print a message here on the screen which says sorry you have entered the wrong username and password. And I also give a reference say try again which will take me back to the login screen where the user can again try to enter and since this login service within the same application I don't really need to give the whole path of this so I simply say login serve right so it's going to match this in the URL pattern in web.xml and invoke my login servlet So now let's see, let's run this application. I'll say run on server. I didn't stop my server earlier, so I'll say restart server. So okay. Okay. So now you see that uh, I've got the same login page. And enter username as user1 and password as I'll say pass I simply entered pass and I click on login so it's giving me an error message saying that sorry you have not entered a wrong username or password right so if you see here uh, in the console the constructor of my login servlet was called the init method of my login servlet was called and then the service and do get of my login servlet was called followed by the do get of my validate servlet and I displayed the username and password user one and pass and the failure do get method was called which displayed the message on the screen so when I click on try again we're going to redirect me back to the login screen and here I pass user one and pass one now so it should take me to the success servlet right so here if you see it has taken me to a success servlet and it gives me a message called congratulations you have entered the right username and password Right. Okay. So here, if you see uh, my username and my password is passed in the URL. Okay. Uh, so even though uh, my password was not visible on the screen when I was typing, it is here visible clearly on the URL which which we can see. Right. So why is this so? Because we use the method of type get. Right. So because the type of method was get, it has passed the form parameters as part of the URL, right? 
and if we would have used a method of type post this wouldn't have been the case so i would i wouldn't have got this username and password on the url if i have used post so let's uh, check that now if that really works so what i'll do is i'll give post here right and since it was post my do post method will be called right so i'll put all my logic in do post right right here also i'm going to put all my logic in do post okay so we are done with that and let's run this again start server okay okay so now when i say user one and pass one it should take me to the success screen okay and here if you see the username and password has not been appended to the url right so that means even though the amount of data which we are sending across is not huge but sensitive you still need to go with post right so that is about uh, something about get and post differences and when to use what uh, you will have to take uh, security uh, into concern as well okay so next um what we are going to see is uh, i'll just show you how uh, something about uh, multi threading right uh, how multi threading uh, happens so what i'll do is uh, in my login servlet i'm simply going to display uh, a message so before that i'll create a created a instance variable called count of type int and i uh, initialized this to one value of one okay and in my do get method i simply display that and print l n i'll say this is request number and i'll say count count is called to count plus 1 right so this is going to display the message uh, so instead of uh, putting it on uh, out dot printer then just before i start the form I'll give this as out dot printer line instead of system dot out dot printer line, so that it's displayed on my screen, right? So what this is going to do is every time the do get is uh, called, do get method is called, it's going to display that this is the request number so and so, and it's going to display the value of count. So uh, if so, we we've learned that in the tutorials. When two different requests comes in uh, to to a servlet from different clients, uh, separate threads for the servlets are spawned and uh, the request uh, is passed to that. Right. So that means the servlet instance is the same, right? So we just need to prove that we have the same servlet instance and two different threads spawned. Okay. So first, I'll simply say run. So I got a message here saying that this is request number one, right? And if I refresh this again, the counter is going to increase, right? So that means I'm using the same instance, and 
So again, the do get method is called uh, on the same instance. So that's the reason the counter is increased. Now let me call the same um, login servlet uh, page from Firefox. So this is a different, completely different session, right? So it's uh, same as I'm sending the same as I'm sending the request from two different computers. So, so if the same servlet instance was used, then I should get this is uh, request number three. And if a new server in servlet instance is created, I should get this is request number one. So I enter that, and I, when I click on go, I see that this is request number three. So that means the same servlet instance is used, right? So even though I've created a separate session, I'm calling, I'm invoking a different session. It's using the same servlet instance, and only a different thread is spawned for my request. So this is one thing you want to make a note of when you are writing instance variables in your servlets. So be very careful when you are doing this. If you are putting any instance variables in your servlet, you will have to uh, make a note that uh, this, this is going to be used across different clients, right? And the same value will be used. Yeah. So I'll simply remove that now. Okay. So this is how basically uh, this explains the multi-threading concepts uh, in servlets. All right, so one more thing is uh, initialization parameters, right? So let's see how do you use initialization parameters. We've um, discussed in the uh, session that uh, you you put in your initialization parameters in the web.xml configuration file, and the only thing you can do is you can read the value from the initialization parameters in your servlets, uh, right? So in my uh, validate servlet, element I'm going to add an initialization parameter right I'll say init param and say param name is um, password okay. and I'll say param value is um, plus two so it's created. So I, I added an init parameter with the param name as password and the param value as pass2. Okay.